this better get used to seeing this hello my name is voya and welcome to my deep guide well today we are checking out the quaderno a4 uh, gen 2 device in an in-depth review and guide so let's begin so here it is the fujitsu quaderno a4 generation 2. first of all what is it well it's a 13.3 inch e-ink powered note taking capable device that is also able to open up and works only with pdf files but it's able to annotate them and you can uh, via the use of their dedicated quaderno pc app you can establish connection with the pc and then you can do some screen sharing transfer of data and pretty much that's about it. Very, very limited kind of functionalities, but what it does, it does in a fairly specific and some things uh, it does in a very good way. It is a non-front lit device. It doesn't have any uh, SD cards or anything fancy like that. Underneath it, it's an Android, but you don't have the ability to sideload your apps. You don't have Google Play or anything like that. It's just the engine that's actually running what's here on top. And in essence, this is a Sony uh, device sort of like Quark Logic Paper was and the first Quaderno was. Uh, so it's the same kind of thing. It's just running their own platform. Um, the availability and the price of this is a bit of a different story and we need to address that right off the bat. The biggest problem, for me at least, regarding the Fujitsu Quaderno A4 is its availability and lack of official sites uh, that exude confidence. So for the longest time, it's basically borderline impossible to find and buy this di uh, device from a reputable source. Now, yours and my definition of a reputable source may differ, but let me explain. So when you type in Fujitsu Quaderno A4 Gen 2 in your uh, search browser, the first thing that pops up is a fujitsuquaderno.com. Now to anyone, this will seem like a very official result, correct? Well, I actually fell for this and um, I almost uh, basically ordered from them, uh, except that one of the users, it was an incredible bit of luck that on the day that I ordered from this site, and I ordered the other version, which is the Google Play enabled version for a thousand dollars and a cover. One of the users actually said like, hey, yeah, but uh, there was a comment that was blocked and there's a store that's a hoax, blah, blah, blah. And I asked like, what, what store is hoax? Well, it's the same name of the device and then .com. And that really alarmed me immediately because I already previously had another alarm bell. So the first alarm bell for me was First of all, the price of this is $780 just for the device and for the most basic old school plastic pen. So that's the price of it. And then you have the other version, which is Fujitsu Kuderno Google Play enabled, enabled which is the Google uh, Good e-readers hack of the Kuderno A4 for $250 to make it uh, Google Play enabled, bringing up the price for this product to a smooth $1,000, which is insane. And the cover itself, that's the cover that I got, is $140. Now it's a nice cover, but $140 nice? I'm not so sure. So I ordered it, I bit the bullet and I ordered this the thousand dollar version because I wanted to show you guys how it works with Google Play so that people can actually have as much information as possible with this one. Got the information from uh, the YouTube uh, viewer who said, hey, this is a hoax. And then I immediately went on to the, uh, my order and noticed that there was no way of actually canceling my order. So I had to write to them. This is my first email when I said like, I'm interested to uh, hear about the cancellation uh, policy as I may need to cancel my order. Uh, so they said like, uh, they replied, 
pr pretty much immediately within an hour which is excellent um, yeah you're entitled to cancel your order within 14 days without giving any reason to do so blah 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 which is good thanks for your response so um, then the following morning I decided that I'm going to cancel it and then uh, they said, please be advised that the case has been shipped via express email. They've separately shipped out the flipbook cover, but haven't shipped out the device. My first alarm bell, big one, was actually this. The email that you get from Fujitsu, uh, fujitsukoderno.com is sales at findereader.com. Now, I am aware of findereader.com. They do not have a good reputation. They are not a good store. You will see a ton of people having not a great experience with them. So that is a very, very big red flag. And that's why I was interested in cancellation policy. In the meantime, I've heard in between these two, I've heard from the YouTube user who said, hey, that's the store. Then I said like, okay, I'm going to cancel it. But in the meantime, they shipped the uh, cover. And then uh, I had to clarify, please do not send a device. And uh, yeah, I would like to cancel the whole thing, blah, blah, blah. Then please send me the tracking number for the case shipment and the carrier used because there was no details provided regarding that. So I can track it. So they would reply like uh, within 24 hours. So that was almost a day later they you know, replied. Please be informed that your order is under process. I understand that you like cancel order. Let me forward your request. It's like, okay, but still not getting tracking results or tracking number or who are you using to track the shipment? So, yep, the, your case has already been sent, but we'll cancel your device, okay? At least they are saying that they're gonna cancel the device. Then I again say, uh, yeah, on uh, later that day, can you give me an estimated date when you will initiate the refund for the device? Can you send me the tracking number? Can you send me the details of the return process for the case? And uh, then there was, after this, there was no communication from them whatsoever, but I did receive a refund on February 1st. So kind of three, four days after this communication, uh, I received the refund, full refund for the device, not for the case. And they never communicated anything to me at all. I never received a shipping confirmation or a shipping number or which carrier they were used. Thankfully, I have received that eventually. Uh, it took quite a while. But uh, that was the buying experience from FujitsuKoderno.com, which is actually a misrepresented store from FindEReader.com. So please be aware of that, that that is something that you have to be uh, very, very much aware of. And um, no, I would not. With my purchasing experience with uh, Fujitsu Quaderna store, I would never buy anything from them again. So the other availability of the Fujitsu Quaderno is on Goody Reader store, but that will depend, of course, uh, people have mixed experiences there. And also the pricing is absolutely insane there because it's again, a thousand dollars for that and $780 for, uh, or 750 dollars, however it was, how much it was, it's 780 dollars for the device itself. So where did I get my device? Well, I got it from ebay.com. And you can actually see that I bought it from a store called Shop Tokyo 123 on eBay on January 29th. That's when I canceled the order. Um, and uh, it was delivered to me six days later which is absolutely fantastic uh, from Japan. And this is a brand new device. This was not a second price. And I got it for 545 US dollars, $10 for shipping. So that right there is a very, very significant difference. You know, if it's gonna be 545 bucks or $780, that's uh that's those those 335 bucks are quite considerable right and this is a store that has for example a 100 percent satisfaction rating you have 30 days free returns and ticket uh, and things like that so the availability will vary but 
that is where I purchased my device from and my experience from this shop was really good. The device that I received was of course first in Japanese but you had the option of getting it in English and uh, switching to English language and then everything was fine on the first startup. So that in itself I think is uh, an important bit of information. Now I, I apologize that right off the bat from the beginning of this video I've spent so much time talking about this but I think this is an unusual situation regarding this device and it's a very important uh, uh, in bit of information to share because the top search results that you get are not something that I would recommend that you purchase from these stores Yes, they, they returned my uh, money, which is great, but the communication was not good. The past experience of other people on findereater.com is not that good. It's very sketchy at best. The $335 price difference between a uh, good pro buyer protected store from eBay versus something that you have no idea who it is behind it and what they are doing and have a shady reputation for $335 more, it just doesn't make any sense. All right, so let's talk about design and build quality real quick. Um, if you're interested in more detailed information, go check out my unboxing video because I talk quite a bit in detail and examine the build quality there quite in detail. Here, I'm just going to run through a summary of it. This is an all plastic affair, very, very thin device. However, um, it's not that terribly well built. It's the exact same housing as the um, the previous generation of Coderno and as the uh, Quirk Logic paper, it even has the asymmetrical edges here. So it's the exact same thing. Everything's the same. The only difference is that you have a USB-C instead of a micro USB. That's pretty much it. So it's a nice looking device. It's flexible. And I think it's done like that by design. It has a Mobius flexible screen, of course, which is plastic. And the entire device is quite flexible which is okay because it's um, uh, fall resistant, it's elastic, it's there to kind of protect it. So there's nothing really bad to crack like with an aluminum or a glass type of device. So that's a big plus on it. Um, the part where it's not that good is because that basically you have, if I'm able to catch a reflection around here, you should notice around here you should notice yeah there we go some inconsistencies in the screen surface and you can actually see it on the other end as well so this is something that's definitely noticeable it's not dramatic but it's definitely something that you can notice another thing that i'm not a fan of is that this one is kind of protruding as you can see on the edge and if you pull on it a little bit more you can see that it's really kind of, uh, yeah, the, the build quality is very, very cheap. Now, if you spent like a thousand bucks on it or $780 on it, I think that the build quality would be a disappointment. At $545, however, for a 13.3 inch screen, not that disappointing at all, especially because I do understand that this is, uh, it's a very thin, extremely light device for a 13.3 inch device. It's like 370 grams, 360 grams, uh, 368 grams, I apologize. Um, so it, it feels really good in hand and it's uh, easy to carry around. And it's just like a portable notepad for an office. It's, it's just perfect for something like that, like a legal pad or something like that. So overall build quality, I would give it like three out of five. So not absolutely terrible, but nothing exceptional here to talk about. As far as the specifications go, well, it's a fairly kind of basic device. So it does have a 13.3 inch um, Mobius flexible 1250 uh, panel, which is really good. And runs the standard resolution for these devices at 1650 by 2200. And that gives you the standard 207 PPI for these devices. Has a both capacitive finger input touch and the EMR, 
digitizer, which is a stylus pen, which is a really, really good thing and one of the big advantages over the uh, previous generation and especially over the Quirk Logic paper because you can use any EMR pen that you want on this device, which is an excellent thing to see. It has uh, 32 gigabytes of storage, out of which around 22 gigabytes are usable. Uh, it has a USB 2. Uh, not a 3, it's a USB 2 Type-C connector, and it is here the dimensions, so only 5.7 millimeters thin, but of course it does not have a front light, so that kind of makes the device automatically one millimeter thinner. Um, weight approximately 368 grams, and uh, yeah, here's one thing that's going to be important for a lot of people. Supported file formats, only PDF. Only PDF files are supported on the Quaderno. Something to definitely keep in mind. Also, you should keep in mind that this is a Japanese device primarily made for Japanese market. So it's going to be hard for you to find any information um, that's non-biased um, that is not on Japanese. So that's one of the reasons why I actually wanted to create this uh, video and address this device. It comes with a Cortex-A53 quad-core, 1.8 gigahertz CPU, um, and it has four gigabytes of RAM that runs all of this. It has a Wi-Fi, it has a Bluetooth 5, and it has NFC support, uh, support for the Felicia screen unlock and NFC for type tag uh, type 4 tag which can be used to basically securely lock and unlock your device so that nobody else can actually access it so that's the point of the nfc connectivity there uh, but that's pretty much it it doesn't have um, g sensor it doesn't have uh, usb c otg none of it there, there's nothing that's pretty much it and they claim that you should easily get up to four weeks of battery before you need to recharge it uh, let me just tell you right out of the bat that um, that 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 is bull that is pure pure bull not even close because this device constantly runs out of battery and uh, yeah spoiler alert before you go to the battery section where you can see the most detailed more detailed uh, analysis this is probably the worst performing battery device that i have tested thus far so that claim four weeks that uh, goody reader and somebody somebody else also says yeah please do not trust that because it is not true the screen is quite nice on the um quaderno a4 and it's the standard mobius flexible 13.3 inch the same one that you actually get on the tab x with the difference that um, in here you don't have that glass panel that they've added on the tab x so it's full uh, benefit of of, uh, closeness of the ink to pen distance you should see it because there's also no front light and also uh, all of it is like the contact with the screen is really really immediate and that actually is not only present when you're writing on it but also when you're reading on uh, the Coderno you do see that difference of how far away is the actual ink from the surface that has something that you can see and you can see like a reflection or something like that so that's something that i really really do like on a quaderno it's um it, it looks like the ink is on the surface of the screen almost like that is it's on the surface of the screen something that i really loved on the quirk logic paper and it's definitely something that i like on the quaderno so from that perspective it's really really good uh, clarity of text is really nice as well. As you can see, it's nice, crisp, the bolds pop out, the contrast is really good. So everything, even the italics are nice and uh, legible. So all of it works pretty, pretty nicely. Uh, responsiveness of the device when you're flipping around and how much ghosting do you get? Well, you get some, you can see that we have some ghosting here, but nothing terrible. This, uh, for anyone who has used an e-ink device, they will uh, kind of consider this a fairly normal type of uh, performance. And the refresh uh, rate is good. It feels 
snappy for a non-GPU accelerated device, right? So there's no point in comparing this to Tab X or Tab Ultra because this one doesn't have a dedicated GPU. So uh, for that, I think it's actually quite okay, but it's not on the speediest side of things, but it's definitely not slow. I think it's kind of Goldilocksy, quite adequate. And when you have combined image quality of text and images, I think that it's actually nicely balanced for those things. And you can see here, this is like a color content that's been normally kind of converted. And it's all quite clear. It's a little bit on the darker side of things. And I guess that makes sense because they wanted to pump up the contrast for the text to actually pop up more. But that will kind of reflect itself in much darker images that you will see. And Normally, that's not a problem if you have a platform where you have some control over these things. But unfortunately, on the Quaderno, you do not have that type of control. So, for example, if I go to a um, graphics rich uh, document, such as this one, you will notice that that contrast that we've talked about, while it does make the text pop out quite nicely, on the images themselves, it's a shade too strong. And even though it does look nice and the camera picks it up so that it looks much nicer, in reality, this looks quite a bit darker. But it is an overall nice looking image. The only thing I don't like is, of course, the dithering here. And there's nothing you can do about it. It just doesn't have any dithering control. I mean, the reader has zero control whatsoever. Now, that being said, the contrast setting is actually quite well balanced because even in situations where you have mixed image with an overlay panel and then white text on top and you know kind of different uh, uh, um, type of text uh, above it it all kind of pops out very nicely and is very very easy and pleasant to read so Objectively speaking, yes, the images are somewhat darker. Yes, I do not have contrast control. I don't like those things. I would like it if I had the contrast control, but they don't really bother me. The only thing that does bother me is the dithering here. And that's only going to be relevant if you want to look at graphics rich content. So be aware of that. Reflectivity is excellent on uh, the uh, Quaderno. You can see this is the normal light here and let's go to uh, a full on white so that you can see everything properly because it's much easier to notice. There we go. So you can see this is the normal uh, lower intensity light that they use here and these are high intensity lights and the reflectivity is just exceptionally good on the Quaderno. So a really, really nice way of actually reading and writing on it due to the closeness of the ink to the surface of the screen and due to the lack of reflectivity of the surface of the screen. The pen for this 780 US dollar device is the bog standard cheapest possible uh, EMR pen that was uh, exactly this one, just in black color, was bundled with old books devices such as Nova, Nova 2, Note 2, uh, Note 1 as well. And it's, it's a pen that works. It has a standard nib in front, so that kind of nib that you can uh, easily exchange. So you can put a remarkable nib if you want in there or something like that, or a books nib. And then you have uh, the button, which acts as an eraser, and you have an eraser on the back. It is of an absolutely dreadful quality, and it just looks terrible, feels horrible in the hand, has no weight whatsoever. It's slippery and, as su and it will bend under pressure. And as such, it's, uh, yeah. The only thing is that the color sort of matches the uh, this uh, cover, and then it looks kind of pretty. That That's the only positive that I can say about it. But uh, to bundle this with a $780 device is an absolute ridiculousness. It was ridiculous when Box was doing it. It's equally ridiculous when Fujitsu Quaderno is doing it. So, yeah, the only benefit is that it's um, it's an EMR pen. So that means that you can throw this away and get a proper pen, for example, a Kindle Scribe pen, and then enjoy this 
much, much more immensely because the writing experience in Surface that Squaderna offers is certainly deserving of a far better pen than what is being actually shipped with it by default. Battery life on the Quaderno is bad. Let's just be, be right up front about it. Um, the general testing that I do is twofold. Uh, in this case, because the device doesn't have a front light, then it's just one test for reading and one test for writing performance. And the, basically the, the way that I do the test is I, uh, for the reader experience, I flip a page every 20 seconds for every 20 seconds for uh, one hour. And for writing, I write continuously normally, but continuously for one hour as well. I take a note of the battery levels at the beginning and at the end of the test, average that out and get an average estimation of how many hours you might expect from a single charge on a device. This is the same test that I re repeat on every single device so that we have consistency and basically kind of a point of comparison between this, these devices. And Quaderno uh, A4 Gen 2 was spending around 16% of battery life per hour of reading, flipping pages every 20 seconds, which averages out to around 6.25 hours per charge, which is definitely one of the, or if not the worst uh, reader battery life result that I have had on my deep guide. Really, really bad. The story, unfortunately, is even much worse on as far as writing uh, goes, be, which is expected, because writing is far more processor-intensive process, so more of the stuff, more of the juice will be consumed. And there, it was actually consuming a whopping 30% of battery life per hour, which means that you can expect uh, uh, roughly around 3.33 hours of continuous writing time per charge on the Quaderno A4. Really, really terrible performance there. And that's not all. The problems kind of continue with this. The power management on the device is quite bad. And I kept running into battery low or depleted on this device when it's just in standby for maybe like two days. So I leave it like two days and it's already depleting. Oh my God, I'm, I'm, I'm almost dead. Please charge me. So that just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And that is a very, very bad result on, uh, as far as the battery life goes on the Quaderno. Really, really bad. All right, so let's talk about the reader functionality um, and capabilities of Quaderno. Well, they are exceptionally limited. It supports only PDF files. You cannot open EPUB files on it. The functionality is rather simple. <laughs> you open it up and then you can swipe pages to read, right? So you can read, you can pinch to zoom eventually. Uh, this is, by the way, something that uh, Goody Reader characterizes as exceptionally good pinch to zoom functionality. I guess our standards differ. Um, to me, this is this is really really sluggish pinch to zoom performance. Let's go and find just pure text and no images. Maybe that's something that affects it. So, is it nope? Nope, that's, that's just how this works. How do you access the menu? Well, you can tap either at the bottom, somewhere around here, there we go. So there, or you can tap around the top to expose the overlay menu that's on top and the bottom. On the bottom, you will say the uh, document name, and on the top, you will have the options. Um, let's go from left to right. So the arrow down here is basically expanding an additional level here. Then next to it, you have this uh, recent documents list. And this is going to list all the notepads and the documents because both notepads and the documents, everything is a PDF on the Quaderno. Then you can do a word search or a search for a mark. It can recognize a star or this kind of snowflake type of a symbol. Then on the top, you have the progress list and the page numbers. Now, <clears throat> the only thing that you can do is here, 
you can drag that progress and go to a specific page, which is quite nice, right? So I do agree, that's that's very nice. But one thing that's, and you can easily return to the page which you came from or back, right? So that's all good. But one thing that's definitely missing is why wouldn't we be able to simply tap on this and type in a number instead of being forced to, um, yeah, just use this and then try to kind of get the exact page that you want. Mm, that's, I don't know, that's not something that uh, I understand fully. It should be possible to simply tap on it, type in a page number and get to that. Then we have undo and redo. So we can undo, we can redo our actions. And that conveniently leads us to the note taking tab here. Um, you can, uh, yeah, you can uh, control where that tab is. First of all, the height of it is going to be affected by if this extra option is exposed. Uh, what I don't understand is that you're going to add like a full on tab here for three icons, literally three icons on the on the right hand side and one bookmark icon on here. Uh, and then you're going to display this one underneath it and not actually dock it here. Oh, wow, that's that's impressively bad. So what can you do with this toolbar? Well, here you have your options of uh, brushes. So you have your um, pencil, ink pen, uh, I guess this would be a normal pen, uh, high marker, and this is a highlighter. And then you have an eraser as well. And in different, uh, in, in different ones, you can choose um, stroke size. Now the stroke size is not free. It's restricted to these five sizes. So super thin, thin, medium, thicker, and very thick. And you can choose between two preset colors. The toolbar itself can be rotated counterclockwise. Uh, so if you want to go here and then you want to go quickly down there, tough luck, you can't do that. You have to go chase it around a little bit and then get it back there. You can uh, write something, you can erase it by pressing the button or by using the rear eraser. Uh, my note, right? And then I can select it like this. And then I can cut it, copy it, or I can't delete it. Well, I guess you can just cut it and that would work as well. Um, you can also use the uh, zoom. So this confusing icon here, this is your region zoom tool. And um, yeah, you can use it to kind of zoom in on an area and then it's going to zoom in on an area and then you can exit. The problem with the formatting capabilities or the lack of formatting capabilities in uh, on the Quaderno app as far as reader goes is that, for example, let's say that this is the level of zoom that I would like uh, throughout the document. You can't do that because as soon as you zoom in, even to any level of zoom that is past native, um, you are in this zoomed mode where you are not allowed to flip to the next page. You're, you're, you're bound to the document and you can see the outline layout of the document, but that's about it. So if you have a document that's a lot smaller and you would actually like to kind of expand it to fill in the uh, 13, the, the wonderful 13.3 inch real estate that you have, which is the point, you can't do that. So that's, that's it as far as uh, formatting capabilities go. You have this option here, which is still haven't figured out, which is basically showing and hiding, tap the eye icon to hide the memorization area. Now there are, I, I wasn't I able to find an English spoken uh, user manual for the Quaderno. So I don't know what this means. So if somebody who is a Quaderno user can actually just let me know in the comments, what is this for? Those are the functionalities here. You have additional options here in the hamburger menu. So you can page jump directly here. So you do have a page jump functionality, but it's just lazy implementation that you can't tap here to get to page jump. Another example of wow. Um, then you have page thumbnails for the entire document and the performance is okay, but 
you know, nothing spectacular. And the only thing you can do here is basically jump to a page. You can't reorder pages, you can't copy pages, you can't do anything about that. So you have annotation list. So this is my annotation. And let's now jump to some other page, another page. Okay, so if I go into here and go into annotation list, it will tell me where the uh, handwriting list is. You have to use the highlighter. You can't use it with the pen. So at least you do have that functionality. Um, so this is a proper highlighter. So you can highlight document sections. You can't do anything with them. So you can't add annotations to the highlights. Um, but that's okay, at least you get this, which is really, really good uh, to have at least that. And I guess in the annotations list now, these are going to show uh, yes, and they're actually showing everything here. Then we have uh, display documents side by side, which is basically taking advantage of this really beautiful screen real estate. And then you have both uh, yeah, documents here. Um, one thing is that uh, when you go side by side, you can have separate documents here and there. If you want to display a single document as a two page spread, you have the two page spread uh, dedicated option. And then you will basically read a single document with two pages displayed per screen. Now it would have been wonderful to have formatting abilities to actually have this then zoomed in so that it's far more readable and that you don't have majority of the screen actually kind of empty in margins. But we don't have that option. So that's that's another thing that's uh, definitely lacking. So the next option that you have for the reader is that you can create a new side note for this document. And this is like a standard way. This is just creating a standard notebook. And it's just getting uh, to associate that notebook with this document. And it enters it into a side by side view. And here I can write my document notes easily visible from the document, right? So the idea is basically like the side by side uh, mode uh, in uh, books. The benefit of it is that this notebook is then associated with the document at any given point. So whenever you are back in the document, then you can always open in um, open that side note and continue writing or read from it. Um, they are not locked to the pages. So mm, it's independent page flipping in the notebook, independent page flipping uh, in the document. And to my knowledge, there is no way to actually lock it so that you have a dedicated notebook page that's associated to the page of a document. You can uh, change the page flow from right to left to left to right, depending on the standard that you're using. You can delete uh, all annotations on this page. You can change the document name. You can copy document. You can set the current screen to sleep screen, like a, yeah, a screensaver, and you can delete this document directly from it. And that's it. Those are all of the functionalities that you have with uh, documents in the uh, Quaderno. And furthermore, because the notes are also PDFs, are the notes are also PDF files, are I tell you. That means that all the functionalities I have described so far are exactly the same for the notes as well. So the notes themselves are also PDF files, which means well, less yabbering for me. Hooray! Because everything that I've described is, is almost exactly the same for the notes with the exception for just one or two things. So same functionalities here, same pens, same everything with uh, this one. We'll go through the pens a little bit later. I just want to go through the differences in functionalities in a notebook. The only difference between a regular document and a notebook is that in a notebook, you can insert new pages. Mm, that's that. Now, 
Another problem that I see is how do I change my template? Can I change my template? Certainly doesn't look like it. So it looks like it that when you're done, uh, when you create a notebook and when you choose a template, uh, you're, you're locked to that option. You don't have the most basic, or at least I can't find it, the most basic option of actually changing a template in your notebook, let alone having one page with one template, another page with another template. And of course, there's no layers to speak of. Of course not. In the upper folder here or the upper menu here, you have basic things. You can sort by name. So you can choose by name, date modified, and you can do ascending or descending options. And that is done for any of the folders in here. Now, as far as the functionalities go, there's no library. There's no dedicated library. There's no dedicated management system is just a basic file system. So you can create folders with a little earmark that's a notebook. So notebook is basically you just generate a new PDF file and then you insert pages and you write in it. So that means that you can create notes in any folder anywhere in your system, which is also fine. When you create a new notebook, uh, he says, oh, add a new note here. Yes, I do want to add a new note here. So this is the only way for you to actually choose a template as far as I can understand. Back to the um, uh, brushes here. So we have uh, three brushes and highlighter and um, yeah, and that's pretty much that. So um, let's see, you can go a regular brush from thin thicker, thickest, or medium, thicker, and thickest, right? And this one is not pressure sensitive, the first brush, right? Then we have the ink brush, which is pressure sensitive, right? And you can see it in the marking here. So that's the easiest way to understand. So you see how these squiggly lines are equal width here, and here they are not of an equal width, well, that's an indication that you have pressure sensitivity, which is not bad at all. Actually, let me test that with a decent pen because this pen is trash. So, oh yes, much, much nicer. Very, very nice thing. But that's an unfair test because that's not the pen that you receive. Yeah, you can still use it that way. It's fine. It's just that the pen is not the best. And then we have the third type of uh, pen, which is uh, almost like a fine liner. And then we have it's very thick and excellent pressure sensitivity calibration here, which is very, very nice to see. Then you have the highlighter, which also has no pressure sensitivity, different thicknesses, and you can choose different colors as well, right? So I could choose this to be yellow, then it would be also exported as a different color. So let's go back to red. And then we have the highlighter here, which I think will not work because it's only here to highlight text. So considering that you can't add text in a notebook, there's no functionality to that. Like, why would you even display this? Another example of lazy programming, because uh, they are already differentiating what type of document it is by showing this option here, insert new page. So they should have used the same differentiation to detect what type of document you're in and decide, hey, should we show this icon or not? Because this does nothing because that's for highlighting the text and there's no text, of course, in a notebook. So yeah, that's, uh, that's how that works. Then we have the eraser, which also has five thicknesses. Um, and I think that it always works. Yeah, it's a stroke eraser. So regardless of what thickness you choose, it's always going to be a stroke eraser. And the thickest one is ready to everything. And that's it. That's the functionalities of the um, notebooks.
ink to pen distance on the Quaderno is absolutely astonishingly awesome. It measures below 0.2 millimeters at around 0.15 millimeter, millimeters. So that means that the effect of writing is basically like you are writing directly on a piece of paper. And that's one of the things that makes this feel so good and so unique. But that minimal ink to pen distance also means that when you're reading, it uh, appears as if the text is on the surface of the screen, which is definitely not the case with the other devices out there. Would it have like a millimeter distance? So that's a very important consideration and a very big plus on the Quaderno A4 Gen 2. Not surprisingly, the screen resistance of the Quaderno is uh, pretty much in line like the uh, Quirk Logic paper was, except that it's a little bit smoother, but it's still like 72.26% of the roughness of a printing paper, sheet of printing paper. So that still puts it into very much like a uh, paper-like experience. And if that's what you're looking for, then this one is definitely going to deliver. But you also have to keep in mind that rougher the surface is, more quickly it will eat away at your writing nibs. And then it was time to do the uh, writing latency test or the DESTA test on the Quaderno. And uh, while I was doing the test and kind of writing on it, it felt really fast and the DESTA test actually confirmed that. And Quaderno has a latency, writing latency of only 31.66 milliseconds, which is exceptionally good. And it puts it in the top 10 category underneath the 40 millisecond category, which is a really, really good result to have here. And to put that into context, I mean, the only uh, devices that are actually faster than this are the uh, Tab devices, the Kindle Scribe, Lenovo, that's still not out yet, but that's coming, and Remarkable 2 in the Super Notes. So only the best of the best are a little bit faster than uh, Quaderno A4, but this one is definitely in the top tier of the excellent writing latency performance. I have covered the cover for the Quaderno um, in the first impressions and the unboxing. So I'm just going to stick to the most important bits. The price for it was, I think, around 134 four dollars something like that so very very pricey it is of a very nice quality you have a lovely quaderno embossed here you have stitching all over the uh, edges and it's uh, through stitching through the other side you have an elastic rubber band here to hold your pen. The quality of the cover is okay, but for example, I received mine uh, with this edge kind of gnawed. So inside of this, there's just a, I believe it's car carton or something like that. So it's not a case. This is not a uh, case. This is simply a protective flip book cover. And as such, it will do that. It has a sticky pad in the middle that you stick the device into. It has these flaps here for holding business cards and other stuff like that. The device, you simply place it in here. You kind of press it there so that it's nice. Close the flip book cover and that's it. As an entire package, it's extremely stylish and old school and nice. And again, it exudes that kind of um, legal pads, moleskin type of a thing, which is nice. It flips around, you continue working and that's nice. But again, we have issues here. So for example, even the bare functionalities such as auto sleep like that's not a thing so it doesn't fall asleep uh, automatically and it does not wake up automatically and for 134 bucks or how many it was they could have included a tiny little magnet here they could have included a tiny little magnet here to kind of detect when it is uh, closed when it's not closed so that you can at least have auto wake up and you know sleep but nope 
we don't have that either. As you can see on the edges here, I think that over time, this whole thing is going to become uh, worn out and it might wear out relatively quickly. Might be something that people, some people like, um, but it's something to definitely be aware of. Now the communication uh, between the PC and how do you actually transfer files onto the device? Well, that's done uh, through a dedicated uh, Quaderno PC app. Now they do mention that there's an option of actually uh, choosing a Android app as well, but um, yeah, when I go to the Google Play Store and I search here or on my phone or on a tablet, there is nothing to be found. So to my knowledge, that does not exist. However, the uh, Quaderno PC app does exist. Installation of it was a little bit tricky because it has like a, um, SS, it has a uh, authorization key that needs to communicate with the device so that they establish a link, so that you establish a locked link between your device and the app that's been installed, which is good. The problem was that the, there was a pop-up window that I was just supposed to click on OK, but it was invisible to me because it popped up behind this one, right? So that was the only point of confusion. And once I figured that out, then um, then everything worked fine. Um, as far as how does the app uh, work with the document? Well, first time when you establish connection, you need uh, to have a uh, wired USB connection. Both your PC and the Quaderno device need to be connected on the same Wi-Fi and then they will be able to recognize each other and work that way. And after that, it's all really simple because it's a simple device. So it supports only PDF files. So that's the only thing that you can transfer. And you can just go through the file here and then I can just maybe say, hey, I want to create a new folder. So I'm just gonna go in here. I'm gonna go, hey, create a new folder. Had a pop-up on the other screen. This is my test folder and I'm going to click OK and it immediately appears on the device. You go into the test folder and I'm just going to drag and drop. Ah, you can't drag and drop. You need to import. Yes, transfer documents to digital. Yeah. So that's a little bit kind of weird. You have to do transfer documents to digital uh, paper. So <clears throat> you can't do drag and drop. Uh, but when you do it like this, you can choose this one. It's going to upload it very quickly and immediately it will appear on the device and you can open it up and everything works, you know. So it works as you would expect it to. Now, as far as transferring documents from it onto um, your computer, well, it's uh, relatively simple. You just click and drag unintuitively. Now you can drag, so you can drag out and I can just uh, copy it over here. And there we go, it has copied. I haven't tried um, if it's going to work with an entire folder. So let's try and see if I drag and drop. Nope, it can't do an entire folder. Can it do multiple files? So if I have two and I drag, ah, so it does not transfer multiple files. You can only transfer one at a time. Well, that's, that's ancient. I can double click on a notepad directly from it and it will open up um, um, yeah, your app that's, uh, that's uh, responsible for dealing with uh, your uh, PDF files. So let me just open up this one. This one has more data. So I can just zoom to page level and there we go. So everything is normal. So you can access it normally. And the display is actually quite nice. So what you're getting is not a rasterized uh, result. You are actually getting the uh, vector data in the stuff that's on the device. Now, you also have the screen capture. And a screen capture basically opens up and shows your entire screen and everything that you are doing uh, on the screen. So you can also switch it and go into full screen mode, which is quite nice. And then, um, yeah, let me just get into an app here. And let's see, let's get to an empty page. And 
Let's start writing on the quaderno. Boy, it does sure feel very nice to write on. You can hold the pen while describing something, it will still actually work, which is not the case in every app that I've tried. So that's definitely a good thing to see. Also, it shows everything that you are doing. So you can, um, yeah, you can definitely go to uh, document and then you can actually go into, uh, let's say, open up um, MDO. In this case, I have an MDO. And the interesting thing is that, uh, let's see here, if I tap on the bottom, I should expose the menu so that I can go into side-by-side -side mode. And then it will also flip into the side-by-side -side mode. I don't need the charger anymore, uh, hopefully. <laughs> um, but yeah, then it's in a side-by-side -side mode. And here you can also um, yeah, configure it any way you want, but you will be able to actually have it like that so that you can cast the screen and share it in um in in a good way so um that's something that i think uh works really really nice and it's very very straightforward you don't have to do any kind of uh, mumbo jumbo stuff other than the initial setup so as soon as you've set it up everything just works and then it's like a connection between the app and the uh, device itself which is the way these things should be done. So that's a very good job here. So overall, the interaction with the PC and the connecting with the PC, let me hook it back up to power because that's one of its uh, quote unquote strong points. Um, yeah, the, the, the strength of this um, um, whole uh, infrastructure is that uh, once it's set up, it works very, very reliably and it's a very nice way of working with this and i can see it being easily used in an office environment provided it has been set up previously and then it works really good where it a little lacks a little bit more than i would have liked is for example in consistency you can't drag and drop files into it to transfer them you have to go through that importing files not a big deal but still feels a little bit old-fashioned the bigger problem is getting the files off from it either i haven't figured it out or the only way is to either do a backup or one file at a time which is most definitely a uh, very very old-fashioned and a very limited way of doing things so it's the conclusion time for the quaderno a4 gen Two. And as usual, let's start with the cons. As described at the beginning of the video, the build quality, I don't have a problem with the flexibility of it, but I do have a problem with the inconsistencies of the level of the screen, that it has some kind of waviness and bumpiness, and the same thing here at the bottom, that it's kind of, again, wavy and not consistent. So it just doesn't exude quality at all. It has extremely limited uh, document formatting capabilities. There's no contrast control whatsoever. Seemingly, there seems to be no way to actually bookmark pages in documents. The entire platform supports only PDF files. No EPUBs, no PNGs, no nothing. Like, no nonsense. PDF or die. Pinch to zoom performance is exceedingly slow, despite what other resources may tell you. I have showed you what the performance is in normal uh, documents. There's no auto sleep or wake up functionality. There's no USB OTG support. There's no handwriting recognition functionality. It seems like uh, getting the files off from Quaderno back onto your PC is limited only via the Quaderno PC app, and I have not been able to find a way to transfer more than one file at a time, which if that is actually the case, then that's uh, 
that's that's a pretty big con. There's no way to change a template in Notebook after the fact, after you created it, and there's no way to add a custom template, and there's, there's no way to actually have a different template on an individual page within a Notebook at all. So extremely limited environment as far as that aspect goes. The home button is not that responsive, and I find myself having to press it several times and that's again reflection of that build quality uh, the quality of the default pen is it, it's really old and the quality is really really low so especially for a device i mean for me that i paid 545 bucks even then it feels cheap but if you pay like 780 and that's what you get Oh, no, 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 no. Lack of official support, documentation, user manual, or any kind of instructions in English, that is most definitely going to be a problem for uh, Western customers. There is no mobile app available that I can find in uh, the European or Norwegian Google Play Store, despite what uh, Goody Reader and some other resources claim it's simply nowhere to be found. Not really a super fast device. It's not super slow, it's just average. And the battery life is the absolute worst, you know, uh, collectively that I have tested on any device so far on my deep guide. And the final uh, huge con for me, the biggest one is the availability and price. Uh, it's it, it's diff it's really difficult to get the device from a reputable source that you can have normal warranty that you can have a normal return period i had to resort myself to actually buying it from ebay which not many people will resort to buy and that in itself you know the availability and the price of the device is simply the price is too high av availability is too limited and there's no official way of actually buying it so that's most definitely a con and now for the pros of the Quaderno Gen 2 A4. Even though the image uh, adjustments are extremely limited, as in none, you have no control over contrast or anything like that, but what is actually provided is a very nice image and uh, clarity and crispness of the text. And the contrast balance overall, I think, is a good balance that favors text, but it's not too damning against the images themselves. So it's a nice image quality and a nice contrast balance. The surface of the screen has absolutely excellent reflectivity. It has excellent writing experience. It has very, very good writing latency and overall writing performance. PC app in generally actually works well and it's nicely organized and it's quite capable once you get to set it up. Uh, Coderno is a very focused device, very much distraction-free device and something like that if used for exclusively note-taking and light document markup can prove to be a very, very, very enjoyable device to use. The user interface and the OS is uh, made in such a way that it has a very, very easy and mild learning curve. So that means that it's a quite an easy device to, you know, learn and pick up as you go along. So quite intuitive. It's very thin and very light. And for a device of this size, it's a really, really positive thing. Ink to uh, pen distance is exceptionally good and probably the best that I have seen on any device to date. It's below 0.2 millimeters. It's around 0.15 or something like that. And that is the thing that I talked about in the screen um, image quality and stuff that it pops it, it doesn't pop it's it's almost at the surface of the screen so the ink pixels are almost at the surface of the screen and that really really uh, not only does it give a very nice reading impression when you're using device for reading but uh, when writing it also feels exceptionally good the flexible and intentionally kind of plasticky designed should prove quite durable over time. And finally, the price can be quite a good value if you snag a deal like I did for 545 US dollars. Then this becomes um, not one of the, but probably the cheapest 13.3 inch e-ink device that you can buy on the market for 545 dollars. Conclusion in summary of the uh, Quaderno A4 Generation 2. I have been skipping over this device for the longest time, mainly because um, 
of the issues that I mentioned. Now that I have actually used it and tested it and spent time with the device, it doesn't surprise me at all. It's exactly what I expected it to be. There are only a handful of things that surprise me, um, but it's exactly what I thought that it would be. So in summary, for a full asking price of $780, this is a device that you should, you know, give a wide, wide pass because it simply doesn't make any sense. For the ridiculous price that Goodies Reader has for the $1,000 one, where you actually unlock a Google Play as well on it, then you, unless you're a reviewer and you want to kind of review like this kind of a thing, you should genuinely, you should pause and reevaluate your decision making processes because giving a thousand dollars for something like this with the Google Play doesn't make any sense and is practically impossible to justify. However, if you snag a deal for 545 or 550 ish kind of dollars with a good return policy, brand new from a reputable seller, then this is a very interesting proposition only, 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 only if you fall within that very narrow niche field that this device will cater to. Who are these people? Well, those are people who are looking for mainly to write and uh, annotate documents, exclusively PDF documents. You have to remember this cannot see PNGs, it cannot see EPUBs, it sees only PDF files. So that's a huge limitation and just narrows the field even further. But if you happen to find yourself that you find within those narrow uh, confines of this device, then for the price of 550-ish kind of dollars, Quaderno A4 Generation 2 can actually make you quite happy and will be a good device for you, um, provided that you accept the fact that it's constantly going to run out of juice when you need it to actually have juice. So even when you do fall into that super narrow niche, the battery life and the battery management is just a big, big crutch for this device because it's constantly running out of juice and that's just not not a good thing for a device that's supposed to be, you know, just around and, and working. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you own a Coderno Generation 2? Do you have similar uh, abysmal battery life or is it maybe something in my own setup here? Should I rerun battery tests and see it? Because they, it just doesn't make any sense that it's that bad, especially in standby. It's just like kind of draining all the time. Um, also, let me know what you think about the video. Let me know what you think about the device itself. Uh, what are your purchasing experiences with Goody Reader? What are your purchasing experiences with uh, uh, Find E Reader or whatever that website is called and things like that. Also, um, if you do like the content that I do, please then uh, like and subscribe to the channel, uh, channel, channel, and ding the notification uh, bell to get notified when new videos come out on my deep guide. And also, if you want to further help support the channel, you can check out the uh, my daily mydeepguide.com/shop, and you can find my daily organizer there, which is a daily organizer for your yearly, quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily needs, and not just an organizer, but also a journal, uh, which helps with introspection, reflective uh, kind of practices and things like that. It's helping thousands of people, so it might be something uh, along your line. So check it out. And also you can check out the playlist in the description to find out more details and see if it's a product for you or not. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next video. Bye.